hear from Colin Corey, the Senior Director of Science and Conservation with the San Diego Botanic Garden. Please give him a round of applause. Good morning. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with you today, thanks. Uh, okay, so as a biodiversity conservationist or conservation researcher, um, I have been uh, fascinated, obsessed with how this diversity in, in food has changed over time. And both tremendously interested and also frustrated by our lack of information on, on, on real information on how that's changing, especially big information, global information on, on what, is, what is the big trend of what's happening, for instance, over the last 100 years. And, um, and, and that has led to these back of the envelope big statements that we've made in particular that we've lost 75% of diversity that you may have seen in the news very often repeated. And so a lot of my career has been trying to unpack and figure out can we go deeper and really figure out what is, what is really going on with how our diversity is changing and, and what we eat. And so I was really excited several years ago to realize that there are some pieces of information out there, big pieces of information, and, and one of those comes from national food supplies, that is what is available to countries around the world about uh, what their citizens eat. And so what's produced and what's imported, extracting what goes to other purposes and is lost. And so what is it in terms of crops and livestock that we eat around the world? And as a conservationist, I was looking into that data set, which was 50 years of time from about the 1960s to the present, trying to um, look for what has been lost along the way, of course, as a conservationist. What are specific crops or livestock that have disappeared? And I didn't actually find anything in that data that indicated that anything had disappeared. And that was a surprise to me, but I realized then at that time that that was because that information that we have doesn't mark the stuff that is losing, um, that is disappearing, the local stuff. It really marks the stuff that is, is still around. Uh, but I found through that process something else equally fascinating and interesting. And so I might need to ask my fellow presenters how to move a slide. Is it just this little thing here? Let me try. You should just, yeah, there you go. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, and so what I found that was so interesting to me, I'll share with you really quickly. So 50 years ago, um, uh, around the world, there was this diversity of foods that were available. And actually over 50 years of change to the present, there is evidence that more foods, more diversity of crops and livestock are eaten in most countries around the world. In turn, actually, the relative contribution of those foods, things like eggplants versus sorghum versus rice versus maize, have started to balance out in most countries around the world. And the most important crop, for instance, 50 years ago, places like in Thailand, rice has actually declined in its importance as other foods like wheat mm. and potatoes have come in. So increase in alpha diversity, more foods being eaten of these, of these globally important foods, let's say, the, the, the dominant foods, and a balancing out. Because of those two trends, increasing diversity of alpha, of, of, of the richness and of the, the balancing, we end up with increasing similarity around the world and what we eat. And so 50 years ago, if you map in a visual way all of the countries around the world and how different they are in their food supplies, and then you go 25 years later, and then you go 25 years later, you end up um, with a great contraction in beta diversity. That is, how similar are each of our food systems around the world? And this is just a couple of countries that indicate um, uh, 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 that trend towards a center. What is this center? This is the globalization of food, food supplies, of, of food diversity. This is heading towards some sort of um, um, center. And I, I think that there's no indication that this is slowing. We are still globalizing around the world. Um, but it is efforts like this that, that look at, at, at changing that trend in a different way, or at least looking at, at a greater diversity that can be, um, that can be implemented or re-implemented. And so I finally come to gamma diversity. We talked about alpha, which is the, the diversification at the local level or the national level. This beta diversity that I think we have um, largely not focused on or, or forgotten as we've been so focused on whether we're eating um, uh, certain types of eggplants or, or um, 
or varieties of beans or whatever. Uh, gamma diversity is the whole diversity, the, the entire global diversity, which is, again, what PTFI is so interesting, really looking at this big, big picture. And the indications are that I think that gamma diversity, um, that we're pack, past peak diversity in the world, probably, um, and that gamma diversity has declined. But what is decline is the local stuff. The, the, the really local unique stuff that, that Dan was talking about, talking stories about. And that again is why I think PTFI is a really interesting initiative to try to uncover, discover, and understand what is that local diversity that still exists and how can we celebrate it and bring it back up. Um, my final point is that this indication around uh, a homogenization around the world is not just a trend in national food supplies. It's also seen through several pieces of literature in what farmers grow, also in what modern varieties um, are, are like in terms of their genetic level, that they are also homogenizing in many ways. And even in farmers' land races or heirloom varieties and in wild relatives, that there is through increasing connectivity and globalization um, and mixing and matching of the world, both uh, this diversification through globalization and also a homogenization around the world. That, that we might want to be looking at. So thank you so much. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> you can take a seat. Yeah, sure, thank you. You know, it, uh, Colin depressed me a little bit because this increasing <laughs> homogeneity and globalization and increasing similarity seems, you know, I, it, I, when I travel the world, which I have the, the honor of, of being able to do, you do see that. You see the same restaurants everywhere. You see the same sort of foods. But I think what the PTFI can do, and, and Colin said this, is really expand that interest back into local and regional crops so that they aren't lost and that, that we can bring them back and honor them and honor the people who have, have been keeping them for generations. So thank you again, Colin.